In this video, I will show you how to configure footer with footer builder. Before we start with the footer builder, I would recommend you to watch our header builder video first. Because the building and the styling work of the footer builder are similar to the header builder. Let's get started. To access the footer builder from under appearance, you have to click on customize. I'm going to open the link in the new tab. From under general options, you have to click on footer, which will then directly take you to the footer and the footer settings. Here you will see all of the footer builder elements are under the elements tab on the customizer sidebar. Then under the footers tab, you have the global footer option. If you click on it, as it is mentioned here, you will be able to add a reveal effect as you scroll down. You can select the reveal effect for a desktop, tablet or mobile device or for all the three devices all at once. Let's go back and back to our elements. You will notice that the footer builder interface is similar to the header builder interface. Just like with the header builder, you will find the top, mean, and the bottom row. In order to access the row control, you can just hover over the row and you can click on edit or you can access the options by clicking on the gear icon that is available for each of the rows. We will select the main row. Here you can select the number of columns per row. Depending upon the row columns you select, the columns layout will be different. For example, if you select only one, then row vertical spacing is what shows. If you select two, then you get different types of column layout designs. And it is the same for when you select different columns per row. Let's select four. Then you also get the tablet and mobile responsive options. When you select tablet or a mobile responsive options, you get to choose between a stacked or a two-column layout. So if you select stacked layout, this is what it looks like. Whereas if you select two columns layout, the layout will change. Similarly, for the mobile device, this is the stacked layout display. And if you select two columns, you will see the layout will change accordingly. I will stick with the stacked option for both tablet and mobile device and I will switch back to the desktop view. Next is the item spacing. You can set the item spacing from here as well as the row vertical spacing. You can also select the vertical alignment from three different options available here across different devices. You can also select the container width as fixed or fluid. Then you can select row visibility across different devices. Simply unselect the device where you do not want the row to be visible. Like for example, if I unselect the desktop device, then the main row will not be displayed on the desktop view. Whereas if I switch back to the tablet view, the main row is visible. Now if I select the desktop device back on, the main row will now be visible. Next is the design tab. Here you will get all of the color customization as well as the styling options that you can play around with to give a hand-picked touch to your rows. You get the same options for the top and the bottom row. Also, just like with the header rows, you can temporarily disable any of these rows by clicking on the eye icon. If I choose to hide the bottom row, I simply have to click on the eye icon, after which the bottom row will be hidden. If I click on the eye icon back on, the bottom row will be displayed once again. 
Now, let's dive into elements. Let's start with the contacts element. To access settings for contacts element, you simply have to hover your cursor over the contacts element. Then, you have to click on the pencil icon, which will then reveal the settings for contacts elements for footer builder. Alternatively, you can also click on the contacts element directly from the builder interface, hover your cursor, then click on the pencil icon. There is also another way. From under elements, you can directly click on the contacts. The settings for contacts elements in footer builder is similar to the contacts element settings in header builder. Apart from the elements that are already added, and they are also displaying here in the footer section, you can also add more elements of your choice. You simply have to click here, which will reveal the options. You can select from any one of these options. Then you have to click on the add button. So for example, if you want to add in work hours, you can select work hours and click on add. After you add this element, it will be displayed here. Now, if you want to further customize it, you have to click on the drop down arrow. Then you can add in the required details. The same option is also available for the rest of the elements. And it is also available for any of the elements that you choose to select and add. Next, you can also allow your users to open the links that you have added in any of these elements in the new tab. You only have to enable the toggle. After you enable the toggle, your visitors will be able to visit the links that you have added in the new tab without leaving the main site. Then you can increase or decrease the icon size. You can also select the icon size responsiveness across different devices. Similarly, you can also increase or decrease the item spacing. You can increase or you can decrease it. Just like with the icon size, you can select the item spacing responsiveness across different devices. You can also select the icon shape type as none rounded or square. If you want to reset any of the settings or changes you have made, you can always click on the reset icon. From under design, you can select font family, font style, as well as set the font size, line height, letter spacing, and apply other styling options. You can also select the font color, which is now set as dark gray. You can click here, then you can select the color of your choice. Right now, as soon as I selected the dark blue color, the color has also changed here. You can also select the link initial color. This is the color applied to the link if you have added any. Then you can select the link hover color. This is the color that displays as you hover your cursor over the link that you have added here. Next, you can also select the icons color. So instead of the dark blue color, if I choose to select white, it will change to white. Okay, maybe let's select a different color. Maybe dark gray. Okay, this looks fine. Then you can also select the hover color. The hover color is the color that displays as a hover the cursor over the icons. So instead of white, let's select dark blue. And now the hover color is dark blue. You can also set the margin. Now we have the socials element. I have created a separate video tutorial on how to add social media for header and footer builder where I have explained this element in detail. Please refer to that video with the help of the link I have added in the description box below or just click on the eye icon above. So let's shift towards the bottom row and now we will explore the copyright element. 
Click on the pencil icon, which will open up the settings for the copyright element. The first option is copyright text. With the help of this option, you can easily add in the copyright text of your choice. Currently, this is the default copyright text. So let's assume that I do not want to display the Powered by Rishi theme on my site. Then I can simply remove the text from under copyright text. You can then add in the copyright text of your choice. You will also see the codes here for site title and current year. These codes help you to display the current year and the site title without having to add them or type them out here individually. Then you have additional options of horizontal alignment. You can also select vertical alignment and visibility of the copyright information across different devices. Under design, you will find the options like setting the font family, font style, and selecting the font size, line height, letter spacing for your copyright text. You can also select the font color. The default color is selected as white. Just like with most of the color settings in Rishi theme, you have to click here, then you can select the color of your choice. As soon as I selected dark blue, the color of the copyright text has also changed to dark blue. I will set it back to white. You can also set the font color responsiveness across different devices. Then you can also set the margin. Moving on with the next element, let's go to footer menu. Click on the pencil icon. So here you can select the menu. You can either select default menu, footer menu, footer 2, or menu 1. Whatever menu you select, that particular menu will be displayed over here on the bottom row of your footer. Next, you can select item spacing. You can also enable or disable the stretch menu. Then you have additional options of setting the horizontal alignment. You can also select the vertical alignment and element visibility across different devices. Again, inside the design tab, you get various styling and customization option for your footer menu. You can select the font family font style and set the font size, line height and letter spacing. Then, like I showed earlier for other elements, you can select and change the font color for your footer menu. You also have the option to set the margin for your footer menu across different devices. Let's go back. Now, apart from the elements that I just explained, you also get widget areas 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. You can simply drag and drop the widget to any of the rows. Let's add widget number 6 to the main row. To customize the widget, you have to click on the pencil icon. And this will give you an option to add the block. Click on the add block icon. Now you can select from the range of blocks you will find here. If you click on browse all, you will find all different kinds of block that you can feature on your widget. Let's say, for example, you want to add in gallery. So let's select gallery. Then you can upload your images. You can either click on upload and select the images to feature on your footer area. Or you can click on media library and select the images of your choice. Click on create a new gallery after you have selected the images. Click on Insert Gallery and here the gallery that you have added will be displayed on your main row right beneath the widget number 2. You will also find other customization options that you can easily explore. After you have made all of the changes, click on Publish. Let's go to our site and scroll down. 
Let's give it a refresh to see the changes. If you have any questions or confusions or if you did not understand anything, please do let me know in the comment section below. Or even better, you can directly reach out to our support team. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in our next video.